So, quarter 3, lesson number 2. The topic is writing of proof. So, today, ang gagawin natin, i-introduce natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng proof at kung papaano tayo magsusulat ng proof. Let's say, your school issues identification cards as proof that you are their student. So, to justify that you are a Filipino citizen, you must have a Philippine passport or an authenticated birth certificate. The identification card, Philippine passport, and birth certificate are examples of proofs of identity. In mathematics, you also use proofs. What are these proofs? Where and when do you use this proof? A proof is a chain of true statements developed through deductive reasoning that leads from a hypothesis to a conclusion. It is a sequence of true facts placed in a logical order. Our method used in proving theorems is called the direct proof. The most commonly used direct proof is the two-column proof. In constructing a proof, it may include the following five essential components. Number one, statement of the theorem to be proven. Number two, list of the given information. Number three, a diagram to picture the given information. Number four, statement of what is to be proven. And number five, proof consisting of statements and reasons. The formal proof is written in the following format. Theorem, this is the statement to be proven. The given, which is the hypothesis. And proof, which is the conclusion. We also have the diagram and the two-column proof with statements and reasons. The reasons that may be used to justify each statement in a proof are given information provided in the hypothesis, definitions, postulates, properties from algebra, or theorems that are already proven. Postulate is a statement that is accepted as true without proof. Theorem is a statement that must be proven before it is accepted as true. Here are the properties of real numbers. For any numbers A, B, and C, we have the following properties. First is the commutative property. We have over addition, A plus B is equal to B plus A. As well as the multiplication, AB equals BA. Second property is the associative property. From its root word associate means to say we need to regroup. We have here the addition and the multiplication associative property. Third is the distributive property. And we also have the properties of equality. So here are the following properties. We have reflexive property, symmetric property, transitive, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Substitution and zero product property. A mathematical proof can be given in different forms. The two-column proof helps to clarify the justification for each statement made in the proof. Let's do the practice. So we have the given 12x minus 5 equals 9x plus 7 and we need to prove that x is equal to 4. Let us solve the equation first. So 12x minus 5 is equal to 9x plus 7. It will become 12x minus 9x equals 7 plus 5. So we have 3x 
equals 12 divided by both 3. So, your x is equal to 4. Now, using the two-column proof, we can say that the first statement will be 12x minus 5 equals 9x plus 7. And the reason here is the given. Second statement will be 3x minus 5 equals 7. Since we actually subtract 9x on both sides. So the reason will be subtraction property of equality. And for the third statement, we actually add 5 on both sides. So it will have 3x equals 12. And the reason here is addition property of equality. And lastly, since we divide uh, by 3 both sides, that it becomes x is equal to 4. The reason here is division property of equality. So this is how to use the two-column proof. Another. Let's say the given here. Measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 130 degrees. And the measure of angle 1 is equal to 60 degrees. We need to prove that the measure of angle 2 is equal to 70 degrees. So the first statement, we usually start it with the given. So the given here is the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 130 degrees. And we need to give the reason by given. Second statement will be, the measure of angle 1 is equal to 60 degrees and the reason is given. For this, from statement number 1 and statement number 2, since a proof is about a, a, true, a chain of true statements, it means we need, to, uh, we need our statements to be in logical order. So the third statement will be 60 degrees plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 130 degrees. Uh, we use statement 1 and statement number 2 by substitution property. And lastly, since we are about to prove that the measure of angle 2 is equal to 70 degrees, that will be the fourth statement. And the reason here is subtraction property of equality. Another practice. Okay, so let's have this one. The given here is the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. The measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees. We need to prove that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. So using the two column proof, we start the first statement with the given. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees and the reason here is given. Second statement will be the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees and the reason here is also given. Third statement, based on statement number 1 and statement number 2, we can now conclude that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 for the reason of substitution. And for the fourth statement, as you observe for, from the statement number 3, that the measure of angle 2 is just equal to the measure of angle 2. And the reason for this is the reflexive property. And for that, we can now conclude for the last statement, as the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3, and the reason here is subtraction property. So this is how to use the two-column proof. Once more, we need to prove this theorem. Complements of the same angle are congruent. So first thing to do, we need to rewrite the theorem in the if-then form. 
it will become if two angles are complements of the same angle then the two angles are congruent take note we need to rewrite the theorem in the if then form so we need to have the illustrations so the given R, angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary angles. Angle 3 and angle 1 are also complementary angles. We need to prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Again, we need to start with the given. So the given R, first statement. Angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary angles. Angle 3 and angle 1 are complementary angles. The reason here is given. For the second statement, since the first statement indicates that the angle pairs are all complementary angles, we can now say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees. As well as the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 1 is equal to 90 degrees by the reason of definition of complementary angles. And for that, for the third statement, we can now conclude that the measure, uh, measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 1 by the reason of substitution property. For the fourth statement, as you observe from the third statement, we can have measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 1 by the reason of reflexive property. And for the fifth statement, we can now conclude that the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 by subtraction property. And since we are proving that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, that would be the, our, our last statement. And the reason here is the definition of congruent angles. Always remember, another information aside from writing proof using the two-column proof, we can also write a proof in terms of paragraph form so this is what you call paragraph proof so the proof is written in complete sentences accompanied by the reasons so since angle 2 and angle 1 are complementary and angle 3 and angle 1 are complementary then by the definition of complementary angles we have the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 1 is equal to 90 degrees. And the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 1 is equal to 90 degrees. Thus, measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 1 by substitution property. This implies that the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 by subtraction property. Therefore, by, by the definition of congruent angles, angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Okay, let's have another practice for this. So, the theorem here is vertical angles are congruent. Take note, rewrite the theorem in the if-then form. If two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. So here is the illustration. The given is angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. And we need to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So again, we need to start our proof with the given. So angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles and the reason for this is given. Second is, since angle 1 and angle 2 form a linear pair as you observe on the illustration, as well as angle 3 and angle 2 also form a linear pair, we can now have that there is a definition of linear pair. For the third statement, we have, since they are linear pair, we can also say that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary 
angle 3 and angle 2 are also supplementary. The reason here is, if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. For this, since the third statement indicates that the angle pairs are supplementary, therefore, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees, as well as measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. The reason for this is definition of supplementary angles. And for the fifth statement, we can now conclude that measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2 by substitution. And for the sixth statement, measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 2 by the reason of reflexive. For the seventh statement, the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3 by subtraction property and for this for the last statement we can now conclude that the angle one is congruent to angle three by the definition of congruent angles